Hi, I'm Ray. And I'm Veronica. And welcome to the Chick Lit Book Club podcast. Where we read a romance novel and then we talk about it. Today we're talking about Off Track by Shel Sloan. Yay! Yay! Hello, <laughs> darling. Hello! <laughs> How are you? I am fabulous. How are you? <sighs> <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> fantabulous. <laughs> Best this is week all a ever. lie, listener. It is. It is. I'm trying to sell. I'm trying to sell it. I'm trying to sell it. <laughs> Before we started, both of us said, "This week has been a month." <laughs> <laughs> we are changed people. People. We are different than we were on Monday. <laughs> oh. What, didn't I say the other day, and I'll, I'll repeat, I think I actually said it on this podcast before, do you ever want to light a day on fire? How about a week? I'd like to light a week on fire. I'd like to light the last year on fire. I truly oh, would. To watch half, it go dude. up in smoke and to like, the the catharsis of just yeah. like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I need a rage room, like, real bad. Oh. <sighs> You know, we should, you should get one of those panic rooms. You could be like panic slash rage rooms. I mean, that would be a good idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it should really be like would. a bomb shelter. We I should, don't we want... We to have one. Actually, I'm going to let you know. One of my, like, hesitations about rage rooms is that I know there's cameras in there, and I don't want <laughs> anyone... <laughs> I don't want anyone to record me losing my shit, nor do I want to see it, because I feel like it would scare me. <laughs> I like... <laughs> I'm like one rage away from being probably a meme of some sort. I, my uh, closest experience with a rage room was when I was pregnant and both of our cats had died. And mm-hmm. I like was clearly not able to, I was emotional wreck anyway, because I was mm-hmm. fucking pregnant and um, I couldn't like drink to cope with the stress <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> and I like this out of the equation, right? And I also couldn't like hardcore work out because I was pregnant, pregnant. Yeah. and so I had none of my coping mechanisms were available to me. And so we went to we were visiting friends in Cincinnati, and their boys wanted to go to, to um, an arcade. So we go to this little arcade thing, like sort of near their house. It was really cool, actually. Of course, my husband was like a kid in a candy store, oh. and so. Right. So we walk in and I was just like full of pent up rage for like weeks on end. Yeah. And so I go up to like one of those whack-a-mole games. (laughs) Ray, (laughs) when I tell you that I set a fucking record on that machine. (laughs) Nice. You like take these fucking moles back to where you found them. I mean, I let out a lot of rage on those moles. And then when the time was up, I just remember looking up at my friend and my husband and going, my cats are dead. And they were just like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, they were like, okay, let's go get you some water. <laughs> like escorted me away from the whack-a-mole machine. Oh. Yeah. But you know, yeah, I mean, sometimes I used to, do, I, well, a lot of times I would do that. Uh, I haven't done it in a while is... I have one of those old emulators, like for, or there's an emulator of old um, Nintendo games and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I've got a controller. And so yeah. every so often I'm just like, I'm going to play video games because <laughs> yep. I can't handle new ones at all. But I, like, I want to, and I also get the cheat codes so that way I could win. So that it feels like I've accomplished, accomplished something because I'm a cheater yeah. a little bit. Oh, it's it's fine. fine. It's fine. That's um, pretty low stakes cheating. It's all right. Right, right. I'm not hurting anybody but myself, right. I guess, maybe. I don't, I don't care. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so I get the feeling of that. It's like, I want to play some Mortal Kombat and kick some ass. Yeah, and win. exactly. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Get that out. Get I it mean, out. And a part of me understands why guys, guys and girls, not just everybody, likes like the shoot 'em up games because it does yeah. relieve some stress. And I guess it does. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I, I it doesn't, that part doesn't for me. Like, it, it, those sort of like, um, What's the one? Call of Duty and stuff would make oh, yeah. me so nervous because I can't play with the remote control. I'm not a fan of like, yeah, no, totally agree. I am mm-hmm. not a fan of like the first person anything. No. Because no. I can't, my, my, I get like motion sick. I just can't. Yeah. I cannot handle that. I need a, give me a screen that just goes to the right or the yeah, left yeah, or whatever. Yeah, a scroller. Like, yeah. So you, give me Mario. Game. Super Mario yeah. Brothers is where I peaked and I am, mm-hmm. I'm never going to be going above that. Um, I will do some like, I'll rock some Wii Bowling. And some weed baseball, but that's about I gave it. my weed, uh, but it, that was fun. I have to say, when yes, we did have that it, was fun. 
Yeah. I um, accidentally hit my sister. Oops. And and uh, incapacitated her while <gasps> we were playing one night. Yeah, How? I knocked the wind out of her. Oh. Um, we were playing Wii Bowling, and I had a six-pack of Oops. Christmas ale. Oh, and... my God. How are you not dead? Have you seen me? <laughs> <laughs> For people who are not from Northeast Ohio and are not familiar with Christmas ale, uh, we have a brewery called Great Lakes, and their best beer by far is uh great is christmas ale it's obviously only available in november and december now here's the trick about christmas ale it will sneak up on you Mm -hmm. because the alcohol content is actually not abnormally high i think it's like seven percent or something like that yeah but for some fucking reason that no one can figure out two of them will fucking do you in like maybe three you're drunk i mean there's just like yeah i don't understand what it is especially if you're like at the brewery you're like dealing with pints instead of bottles holy fuck i mean seriously you just don't know i mean yeah well if it had been 12 dogs and i drank 12 dogs at christmas and i drank a six pack i'd be dead i would be thrown up because 12 dogs so you know you of course know the story of Of course i know the story so let's tell the story to i'm gonna tell the story to listeners this is very small tangent and then we'll get on to something else we promise we'll do something else promise so the brewmaster at great lakes left he was the one who made the recipe for christmas ale so when he left he took the recipe with him and he took it to, to um thirsty dog and so thirsty dog is another um cleveland brewery it's very good also. It's Akron, technically. It's Akron, but they have the, uh, yeah. the one over in Independence, isn't it? It's probably... Is it in Independence? I'll Google. You keep talking. Okay. Um, and um, so if you drink the 12 dogs, that's 12 dogs of Christmas. That's the old, the original recipe of Christmas ale. So the lore is that each year Great Lakes is trying to replicate it. So that's why it tastes different every year. Now, okay, so it's not Independence. It's East Bank and then Akron. East oh. Bank of the Flats. Um, okay. Now, I have a theory. Oh, I'm thinking about... of Fatheads. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I have a theory on Great Lakes versus Thirsty Dog and why some people like one over the other. And mm. I think it's the water. Because, pe- because Akron water is not the same as Cleveland water. Mm, could be. I think that that's what it is. Because I do like 12 dogs better than Christmas ale. Right. And consistent. you're not in Cleveland water. Like you are outside of. I am outside of Cleveland. Yeah. So I think that has something to do with it. Anywho. Anywho. That was a tangent. Ray, tell me something good. <laughs> okay, guys. So like I alluded to, I've had a fucking week. <laughs> I've had, I'm still having the week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, one of the great things is I got to see this beautiful woman's face. So Aww, brought it up I fucking ton on that one. I love you. <laughs> All right, guys, 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 sir, sir. <laughs> How come no one fucking <laughs> paged me to tell me how fucking good Ted fucking Lasso is? <laughs> Guys, <sighs> I have received no fewer than like 30 text messages from Ray about how good Ted Lasso is this week. It is what everyone needs. In the, okay. It's on HBO, isn't it? No, it's on Apple TV. Oh, God damn it. It is worth the seven day free trial. Just remember, I mean, <laughs> knock it out in one night and you're done. But seriously, I was not in the loop. Okay, so I watched the first episode. Um, this was a month back, but I got you know busy moving and everything. And I was like, this is good. And then it just kind of sat in the back, you know, like. And then I had reason to where I was watching television this week. And I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get back into Ted Lasso. I really liked it. I sat and watched the whole fucking thing until 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I might have watched the whole thing again at some point in the last few days. There's no judgment here. This is a judgment-free zone. 
okay, let me break it down a little bit. So, <laughs> I actually, because now I'm done with the series, and the mm-hmm. new series comes out July 23rd, um, I've watched some <laughs> behind the scenes, and I guess this is a character that Jason Sudeikis premiered, like, back in 2014. And what his thought process was, it's the office meets Friday Night Lights. The 2014 oh. character, I could totally see that because he is Michael Scott. Dumber than a bag of rocks. Oh, man. And, bare, and not much. I like the reincarnation of 2020 better. Okay. There is. He does such a fantastic job. This is like, this is what we all needed during this time period. Like during this pandemic, we need something positive. Really and <laughs> you want, you want to hug Ted Lasso. You want to be hugged by Ted Lasso. You just want him in your orbit. Like, like yes, I can see the similarities of where he was started, but I have a feeling that Apple was like, we need you to really not, we, we need you to focus a little bit more on like, the positive aspects and make him a l- really likable character. Cause in both incarnations of like the Michael Scott character, like the British and the U- U S one, no one really likes him. I mean, really when you think about it, so I can see the being the dumb thing, you know, the, the, the kind of every man, but this one, he is the quote unquote, every man, dumb American in England, but they don't, it's not cheap. And like, you know, that's like a, such a cheap hacky joke anymore. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, the quintessential American. It's so easy to make fun of us, you guys. Which is fine. We we deserve it. Come on. We really do. <laughs> um, but what, so just a premise, a little, a little side, you know, what, what was actually going on in there is that Ted is a um, um, football coach for, I can't, I think it's University of Kansas City or something like that. I don't think it's professional. Maybe it is. I don't know. I Again, I had to re- rewatch it for the third time. The third time. And just, just know that he's a football coach and a very successful co- football coach. So he just, he gets a job offer for to um, coach the soccer, the soccer team of pr- uh, Premier League in uh, it's Richmond. And so he knows nothing about so- uh, soccer at all. Doesn't know, like that they're called boots instead of cleats and things like that. What He doesn't even know what offsides is. So he gets over there. It's that fish out of water thing. Um, but he's so damn likable. So damn likable. There's a part where the owner of the club is is watching like some of his old videos and like watching the interaction between him and his pa- players. And she's like, everyone loves him. Like he gets to the point where he makes, he warms his way into and he unites everybody. And she doesn't want that. She hired him because he doesn't know about soccer. Because oh. spoiler alert, mm. this is the first episode. She wants to ruin the team. Oh my God, this got, is like major league. Yeah, she got, yes. She got the, the she got the team in um, her, her divorce settlement. Oh my God. And the only thing her ex-husband did well was pretty much run this team. <clears throat> so she wants to run into the ground. Fair. I mean, fair. Yeah. And so, spoiler alert, again, this is the first episode. Ted's going through a separation. That's why he kind of took the job. So he gets divorced through this show. I mean, again, not a spoiler. You learn this in the first episode. So there are some sad parts. There's some there's some rough things that you got to deal with. But they're not like Ted goes through some stuff. But to see him change and heal and how he deals with it, how it relates to people he's with, is amazing. It's fucking brilliant. It's That's awesome. Brilliant. And... Fucking Jason Sudeikis can He's get hysterical. it. hysterical. He can fucking get it as Ted Lasso every <laughs> fucking day and twice on Sunday. Thank you for coming to my Ted Lasso talk. We're done here. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> Just can't. <laughs> you you knew in your heart of hearts that I was going to bring up Ted Lasso, didn't you? I wasn't expecting the Ted Lasso talk comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that really I, made my day. Somebody, there's one line that I I was going to text you, but I didn't. And one of the characters at one point was like, "I would." T- <laughs> I take that mustache and ride it like a jet ski. <laughs> I was like, me too, girl. Me too. 
Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm so glad all this is coming to Jason Sudeikis because he got done <gasps> dirty this year. Got done fucking dirty. Oh, so. God. That is hysterical. Yeah. Tell me something good, V. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like last time, I don't even have to think about what my something good for this ah! this week, even though it's been a hell of a goddamn week. <laughs> um, as of this week, all the adults in my house are fully fucking vaccinated. Yay! I could arms. not, could <laughs> not be more excited. Um, I am waiting to see what superpower I get. I'm kind of <laughs> open for like super strength, but you know. Um, I told you, you get that Scarlet Witch powers, man. I know. I mean, yeah. Like, I, I can tell you what I don't want is telepathy. I don't want to know what people no, are thinking. No. Um, but yeah, like I'm I'm just in all seriousness, those are jokes for legal reasons. Um, <laughs> I am, I'm super excited. I'm so, so grateful. Um, just so grateful. Like the night that my husband got his... Um, we were laying down to go to bed and I just looked over at him and I was like, we made it. Like we made it. And I didn't, until it came out of my mouth, it didn't even like the heaviness and like the weight of that didn't, I didn't get it until I said it out loud. And then I was like, this has been the worst fucking year, but literally we made it out alive and we are both vaccinated now. And I recognize that there will have to be booster shots in the fall and that's fine. I'm not opposed to that at all. Right. I fully recognize the need for that. But we, the two of us are further protected. I mean, they say like, even if you contract it, like it shouldn't be as bad. Your, your risk of hospitalization is dramatically reduced if you've mm-hmm. had the vaccine. Um, it further protects my mom. It further protects my grandpa when I get to see him. It further protects our kid who was too young to get the vaccine. Yeah. Um, and I'm super excited because we can, like, schedule play dates with her friends and shit. Yeah. You know, like, she can start to be more social now. Like, she has a friend in her class at school um, <laughs> who, like, I'm friends with her mom already. Oh, okay. Like, that this was a, the, that was already that, a thing. Is this the one that uh, gave her the bear the other day or the stuffed animal the other day? When you left your, left her blanket at home? Oh, no. That was so okay. cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I'm a I want to be a good mom so bad but I'm oh. not so I, I forget all kinds of shit anyway she has a friend in class and I am already friends with her mom mm-hmm. and that like just sort of happened we didn't plan that by any means it just happened to be that yeah. way um, so anyway we're gonna like schedule some play dates and go to the zoo and like I just oh. cannot wait because she her husband is fully vaccinated as of this week and she's a teacher so she's been oh, fully she's vaccinated been, yeah. for a bit yeah um so like we'll be able to hang out and do things and yeah I just yeah. cannot wait like <laughs> I just well, I just want to go and do things <laughs> oh can I want to okay, leave so my I, house I didn't tell you this before we recorded so there's a reason I was at urgent care this week um this last time that I was there was like the nurse and I were talking and I said, well, she asked me about, cause they asked me about COVID symptoms. And I said, Oh, I'm fully vaccinated at this point. And she goes, Oh, great. And she goes, I can't tell you the number of people that we have in here now constantly. She's like, who have COVID for the second time yet. They refuse to get vaccinated. Fuck. I'm, <clears throat> get your she goddamn said, shots. And, get your yeah, goddamn she, shots. Yeah. I, and she said, I go, yeah, good luck. Well, you'll be wearing a mask for the next couple of years. She goes, oh, they won't. I go, I know. They're going to be, it's going to be us who are wearing a mask because they don't do it. But yeah, it's an uptick now on, on second. Of course it is. And yeah, so what is. they're doing is they're coming to urgent care and they're sending them over to the hospital. So, uh, so yes, I think Wear your mask, you please. Get your vaccinations. Yes. Thank you. Bye. So um, I know it was a little rough on you. Yeah, I was um, kind of down on on thursday i got my shot wednesday by thursday i was like i was starting to get the aches like on wednesday night Mm -hmm. and then it was difficult to fall asleep because i couldn't i couldn't get comfortable because everything hurt um and then of course i had like the chills and the hot like sweaty stuff so um sleep wasn't pleasant um by the morning i was like 
I just could not get out of bed. And I did like just long enough to see my kid off to like school. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then my husband actually came back home and worked from home because he was like, I don't know if I need to like be around be you. you. Like, yeah. 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 you're going to need yeah. any help. Yeah. Um, and he had gotten his shot that morning. We staggered it like a day. Did, so no, he gets sick. He was much better off than I was. Like, which? Why are men? Why are men? Um, yeah. So he got his Thursday morning. I was kind of down for the count. Like, all I took a four-hour nap on Thursday. Um, yeah. and hey, by man, and I, I had a lingering headache until this morning, really. Mm. Um, and then which could have been like partially because I wasn't eating very much because I just wasn't hungry. Could be. And no food Were you, tasted you good. Have, you drink coffee, too. So I drink coffee. Caffeine. I drank tea instead because I knew it would be, like, easier on my stomach. Um, but, I mean, all in all, it, it what I had it much better than a lot of people have. Um, I, like, I know people who have literally thrown up yeah. from the second shot. Now, I, I mean, it wasn't – I wasn't dying. It was unpleasant, what? but I well, wasn't what? dying. What makes you think so you got you seriously you got some of the covid like you got what would imagine that full force and having it i would literally get a covid shot every fucking week rather than get covid like the thing is it's if you don't know the science on the vaccine i urge you to look it up it is so fascinating because the Mm -hmm. vaccine targets the spike protein Mm, yes it's yes, so yes, yes. so fascinating like look up how it works and it's it's mind-blowing and if you don't know this either this it's the same or a similar strain um as the sars um mm. like do you remember that from it would have been 2003 yeah yeah when yeah. sars was a thing now well they call it isn't it something sars yes like, it like, is yeah, it's like yeah, sars covid yeah. two whatever it is yeah so um Because it's the same strain, when they, in 2003, when SARS was a thing, the FDA started working on vaccine trials. And so this vaccine was started in 2003, but then SARS got under control. And so then they they were like shifted the money elsewhere. They're like, we don't need this shit anymore. Just let's shift. Um, So like they started all this back in 2003. And then the FDA was like, well, this is under control. We can shift this money elsewhere. And so they did, and they just, like, abandoned this research because it wasn't really necessary anymore. Well, then when COVID popped up, they were like, oh, we have a starting point. So it wasn't like they were starting from scratch last – at the beginning of last year. They had a starting point that was already light years ahead of where a lot of people think it was. Well, we also had, like, avian flu and um, swine flu Mm -hmm. had come through, and Ebola. So we'd had a a system that was built into, in case this big thing happens, Mm -hmm. and then that was thrown out the window. So So luckily, I feel, and there's also some, I don't know, please do not, like, take my word 100% on this, look it up on your own, but there is some data coming in that this vaccine may be helpful in the creation of an HIV vaccine. Well, you you know that they've already for there have been successful well your yeah, vaccine. I was thinking I was thinking cures because there's there have been people who have had they have found it's still early stages with people who have been getting better on some sort of HIV cure. There's also a <clears throat> a vaccine that they can give or a shot of some kind that they can give to pregnant women who have HIV mm-hmm. and their fetus does not get it. That's been around That's for a long time. I know yeah. it is completely fucking amazing. Yeah. I mean, that will turn so many corners for people in third world countries. I mean, yes. And that's it's, it's targeted over. in Africa. That was yeah. like where they started doing it. And it's been it's been very successful. So those are things I urge people to, if you're interested in those things, please look them up. But please, if anything, if you are concerned about the COVID vaccine, please look up how it was created, when it started, all of those things, and how it targets the spike protein uh, more so than anything. And there are now studies coming out that say that there have been rumors about it, like altering your DNA and things like that. There have been studies that have come out that say that that's not true. That's Nothing about that is true. I mean, DNA to which we can fly and turn invisible. 
listen, if and I save- get fucking superpowers from this, I am not going to be sad about it. <laughs> and save our dead husband f- and bring him back to life with our oh children. Oh, my God. I was just talking about WandaVision. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> it's like, this just got so fucking dark. Guys. Guys. <laughs> listen. Listen. Sir. 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 All right. Sir, sir, I need you to watch WandaVision. Oh my god, and, it really did possibly, get dark for a second. Possibly Falcon and uh, Oh, I really do. Winter I yelled Soul. at my husband because he watched like a little bit of the first one without me, and I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? And he was like, <laughs> Okay, well, I fell asleep during it, so I don't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. So just so we can do this now, so we can continue it for each week. Is there any news on Chris Evans' ass? America's oh my ass? God. Have we talked I mean we this is going to be a general like a weekly segment where Apparently i just go it is where we just talk about talk chris about evans. chris evans and we could talk about sebastian stan in this moment in this too. secret tiktok account oh my god i want to find it there are so many it. people who are like trying you know that if he that if people figure he it pro- out though he's going to delete it well i'm sure there's i am almost positive that everyone every all celebrities highly have a secret one mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. what was the one that <laughs> that mitt romney had or was it, it was a twitter account or something it was called like something oh, delecto right i forgot about that yeah that was weird yeah. i thought it was kind of funny actually i was like oh, of course right, it's funny but also I, weird but you know i would do the same thing yeah if, if I, was, I were a celebrity yeah because you wouldn't want to know what oh people like think in you. culty do you remember he had like a oh, secret yeah. facebook account yeah Aww. and he had like 20 friends <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much if i had facebook what mine would be oh, um I'm trying to think if there's any news on Chris Evans' ass. Um, hmm. I don't know. He's still gorgeous. He's still beautiful. He's Chris still Jamal so, Evans. So pretty. Chris Jamal Evans. I love... I I did see a TikTok this week that it was really funny. I'm going to send it to you. I'm not going to really talk about it because it was like, I can't laugh about it, but other people can laugh about it if it makes you funny. Makes you If that means anything. Um, but it was... He's just adorable. He's adorable. He really is. Don't tell my oh. husband. He's not listening to this by any means. He totally is, though. <laughs> Until you go to edit it. Um, Sebastian C. and Bucky. Um, mm-hmm. are, oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's All talk right. about something fun. Yeah, we should. Can we talk about this book? We can. Yay. So we will be back yes. in two and two. Two and two. What's that, Luna? Oh, you want to start a podcast? <coughs> Okay, so what's it going to be about? (coughs) History of the Byzantine Empire and how it relates to the Holy Roman Church through its culture, religious practices, and societal norms? Wow, that's intense. So how are you going to distribute your podcast to the world? (coughs) Anchor.fm? Good call, loons! You know that Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. That way you can spend more time chasing your brother Sherman and soaking up some sunbeams. I know Sherman can be a jerk, but he's just a cat, remember? And the other thing, it has everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Anchor.fm is like one-stop podcast creation. Plus, it's free. I mean, as a podcast spokesdog, you have no idea why things hold monetary meaning, but just know free is a good thing. Yes, so everyone should download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, there's no need for that language. I think our enthusiasm is enough to encourage people to try it out. Seriously, Byzantine history, not like a dog treat or most doggy accessible park review? Okay, I mean fine, but if you have more listeners than us, no busy bones for like a week. Oh, I mean a, a day. Ugh, I can't stay mad at you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, Ray just counted us in like the count. I was actually from Sesame Street. <laughs> I was trying to do Fred Armisen doing Lawrence Welk on <laughs> SNL. A five, a four, a three, a two, a one. So only me, only, <laughs> only no, Veronica was thinking also, it was the Count from Sesame Street. No, it also Street. sounded like the Count because because Lawrence Welk sort of sounded like the Count. One, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> one dirty book, ah, 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 two dirty books. <laughs> One day, my daughter is going to find all of these podcast episodes, and she's going to be like, 
I've never been more embarrassed of my mother in my whole life. My no, goal, no, no, my goal will be to find other ways to embarrass her. Just so no, we're all because aware. your your daughter is gonna you're gonna the way you're gonna raise her, is she's gonna be so socially conscious and everything like that. She's gonna be like, my mom is a fucking badass. Thank Aww. you. One can hope. In between her yeah. hating me intermittently, that'll be fine. Like, well, I mean, you did leave her blanket at home. God damn it. <laughs> As I told her, I said, I told Veronica, I said, don't worry about it. She's going to find other things to hate you about later. Don't worry about it. It's true. Yeah. Uh, you ruined my life. You ruined my, my life. blanket at all. Uh, fucking A. All right. So what are we reading tonight? What did we read? Oh, what are we talking we, about tonight? We're talking about. <laughs> I mean, off, I, I hope I read it. Did I read did it? I read it? On, I'm Shit. looking. Um, we're talking about <laughs> Off Track by Shel Sloan, which is... Yes actually uh, an accidental pregnancy romance so this is sort of relevant because you know that their kid is just going to scream how much they hate them one day i thought i was i was really nervous for a second i was like you're not just telling me something i didn't know all of a sudden you're like hey guess what I'm like ah <laughs> yes uh-huh so yes their child will be angry with them at some yeah point. i'm i'm very certain of it it's it's how it is it's the circle of life Really we is. hate our parents at some point. Yep. 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 If we're lucky, it's not for very long. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So um, we found Shell Sloan on TikTok because TikTokies. that apparently is our new place to find our favorite authors. I cannot tell you the number. And Sebastian Stan. And fucking Sebastian Stan videos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yep. Anywho. So we found Shell Sloan before we even had the idea for this podcast, which was super fun, actually, because we would just Ray was on TikTok before like I was still in deep denial about TikTok and Ray would send me thirst traps that Shell would react to. (laughs) And it was fucking hysterical. And actually earlier today I saw like this was this today is her one year anniversary when she posted her first TikTok. Oh, congratulations, Shell. So uh, at any rate. This is Off Track by Shel Sloan. It's technically her third book. It's the mm-hmm. second in this series, though. It's the Nashville Fury series. Um, her first book. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Her first book, I think, is called Reformation, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, and actually, Shel Sloan is sort of local to us. She lives in Ohio. Yeah. Hell yes. And she's funny as hell. She's funny as hell. <laughs> I love her TikTok. Um <laughs> All right, so I will read this uh, Amazon description to you. Okay, here we go. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby carriage. I have wished for that saying to come true every day of my life, but that's not my reality. Here is my version. First comes the blind date with an incredibly sexy football coach. Then comes the friends with benefits that you know is so wrong, but you don't care because it feels so right. Then comes the Mm -hmm. unexpected baby carriage. At least we got one in order. Except Davis doesn't want the same things I do. I want to fall in love, and he says love isn't for him. I want a family. He has made it clear that a family is not on his agenda. But babies don't care about your plans. They come when they're ready, even if you aren't. The same can be said about falling in love. Oh. Could... We probably probably could go into why he's not... He's he's against dating. Yeah, I feel like we could do that. Yeah, Um, because his father left when he was... Well, it's pertinent because her father left, too. Yeah, right. So... They both grew um, up without dads. Without father, yeah. And so, but um, Davis' mother has uh, has early onset Alzheimer's, Mm -hmm. and so he feels that he had... And with his father leaving, he feels that he needs to be the man of the house and take care of both mom and his two sisters. Mm -hmm. So he just doesn't have it in him to be responsible for another person. Mm Mm-hmm. He feels like he's stretched thin enough with uh, with his job, which is now the offensive coordinator for the Nashville Fury, which is a professional football team, um, and then helping financially take care of – he takes care of the bills for his mother's um, Alzheimer. Like, I, I don't know, like, what the technical term is, but the facility where she stays yeah, um, because she can't be at home alone. Um and then uh, he helps out his his sisters when they need it. 
So he's he's already taking on a significant financial responsibility mm-hmm. with his family. Um, right. And so he does not feel that being in a relationship and and all of that comes with it is a thing that he's interested or able to do. He doesn't want to ever have to choose between the family that he's had his whole life and a new family. He doesn't want to have to do that. Right. Right. Which like fair. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Understandable. Absolutely. And Bethany is very much um small town girl. Mm-hmm. Kind of that's what that's what she wants. Yep. She wants to be a small town girl. Um and she I mean it's Nashville, but like it's it's the same kind of like Yeah. It's the small yeah. town, like, southern philosophy or, like, any small town philosophy where, like, you, you know, maybe you want to yeah, stay there it, and get married and have family. And that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. at all. Now, have you been in Nashville? No, I haven't. I would like to go. It's nice. I mean, it's, it is, it, it kind of reminds me, because it's not like, there are some bigger buildings, but it's pretty small. I mean, it's, it it's small centralized and uh, a lot of bars. I mean, it's mostly bars. It's mostly bars. And My shock which, face. I know, right? Um, it's it is a nice place. I really enjoyed it. I remember sitting talking with the bartender though, um, and she was we were talking about um, living in Nashville, and you should, you can't you can't live in Nashville proper. It's just it's too expensive. expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so she so when I say small town is like she's I would assume outskirts. I don't think she lives downtown. I mean, for to I'm trying to think of what to, like to be able to own an apartment by herself in downtown and she's a hairdresser so like how much and she's a hairdresser I mean, right like I, I can't imagine that she's living downtown i don't I mean and it can did yeah, she talk about her apartment really much at all it's small she said it's one bedroom okay apartment, I just don't because that's that. the whole big buying the house thing right you know? oh right yeah right i get it i remember now um so she's that's like she's got kind of got tunnel vision about what she wants mm-hmm. Which is fine. And which that's fine. I mean, that's fine. This, but that's where she's at is that she wants, she's very focused on, she wants kids. She wants the 3.5 kids, the minivan and the dog. Yeah. She's always wanted that. Wants. Like her whole life. She, yeah. That's what she remembers is wanting that. Yeah. And her mom's remarried. Mm-hmm. And um, Sadie from the first book is her stepsister. Yes. Um, they're very, they're best friends and they're very close. Yeah. Um, which so, happens in the first book, actually. That doesn't... They weren't really friends until the, until the first book. Their relationship yeah. develops during Off the Record, yeah. which was excellent. So, so I think that that's probably where we can... A jumping off point yeah. where we can go from there. Yeah, I think so. So um, do you want to tell everybody about a compliment sandwich? Sure. Okay, so know. we do... It's funny. My husband asked me today how we came up with this concept of doing the compliment sandwich on the podcast. And I could not remember how this came about. Oh, I stole it from another podcast. Did you? Well, because I do a compliment sandwich like in my life. So there's a podcast called Read and Weep, and that's how they do it. They call it, they they don't know if they call it a compliment sandwich, but that's how they do it. They do pro cons pro. Oh, I didn't realize that because I no. a friend of mine um, delivers bad news in a compliment sandwich. Mm-hmm. So like she will. I remember talking to you about this before we started this podcast that like. If she needs to tell someone something that she's upset about or is like um, or is delivering bad news to someone, she'll start off as like a positive thing and then she'll say yeah. the negative thing and then she'll say another positive thing. So like she's ending on a good note. And so that's kind of like that's where I come from with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that maybe just the, the coined term that I heard was possibly from Read and Weep, which if you haven't listened to that podcast, I recommend it's good. A lot of times they, they are kind of dared to read different books. Like they've read all of the Fifty Shades. They've read, you know, um, books that are barely books. So is it would, romance centered or is it just no? It's just general. Cool. It's they do mostly like pop culture stuff. Like they're never going to sit and read like the Necromonicon. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can't. In fact, you can't read it out loud because then you bring the army of the dead back and then you got oh, an and then it's a situation. whole thing. Got, like, God. it's a whole thing. Anyhow, anyhow, so so this is, <laughs> this is how we start our reviews with with our yeah. books is that we do a compliment sandwich. We talk about a pro; uh, those are the buns, are the pros, and then in the middle mm-hmm. there is um, the meat or meat substitute. If you do not do the meat, <laughs> the impossible burger, the impossible the burger. Um, sometimes that meat might be part of a slime and sandwich where there is just 
pile high full of corned beef. And other times maybe it's like um, just a couple slices of bacon on a BLT, you know. Um, So it varies. Uh We have had the gamut on the podcast thus far. Yes, we have. We really have. So that's kind of that's how we roll with our reviews. Mm -hmm. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. (laughs) Yep. You want to start us want... off? Sure. Do it. Although I might hold. The... Well, I'm gonna hold this the first one I like was gonna go with for the first. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Davis a little bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was just. There's a whole thing all through the book. One of my. Go, just go. Just go. Because I don't oh, want to okay. ruin anything. Sorry. Okay. Um, I actually really like and I commend Davis for the sacrifice that he makes at a, at such a young age because they talk about it in high he school. Like he's 13 much, or something when this happens. Yeah, that he's like, this is the sacrifice I'm going to make. Like mm-hmm. relationships, my life, pretty much like decisions that I make are going to be related to my parent, to my mother and my sisters. Mm-hmm. So I give him complete props for that decision because I don't know if anybody else that age or even in their 20, 20s would be as de- devoted to that decision yeah. and be like, you know, um, or, or to their families mm-hmm. and say, you know, I, I'm going to give up my happiness and for others. Right. I mean, and, and, and that's, I'm not, I, I'm not saying that, that people are selfish, like people that age are selfish, but it's just like, you, it's such a small worldview when you think about right. it. It's like, um, you don't really start to think about my life outside of when you're in high school, everyone thinks of high school, Mm -hmm. you get to college and then you're like college. Right. And then you're like, then all of a sudden you graduate. You're like, Oh, big world out there. Mm -hmm. Or some of us are like big world out there at 16. Mm -hmm. So I think he's very much so focused that that's where he's at. And I don't know if I know when he starts to think big world. Right. But, um, I don't know if others would be the same way. Sure. I think that's totally valid. And there is, he even, at one point he's talking to Hunter about like college decisions and why he went to college Mm -hmm. where he did. And he's, he literally altered the course of his life. He made Mm -hmm. career decisions to put his family first. And that's how he is. He just, his family always comes first. Always. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's how, that's why he has chosen not to have a relationship. Um, and, and kind of like with Bethany and, and step back because he's immediately attracted to her. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they are immediately attracted to one another. So he's, this is, she's the first one who kind of lights that fire in him and saying like, I might have a future with this person, mm-hmm. but I can't. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean it's it's interesting to see his his turn mm-hmm. from where he's so you know as the 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 ladies' man or the you know king of the one night <laughs> stands basically. Yeah, I was gonna say something horrible, but I'm just gonna I'm not I'm not gonna call <laughs> what I was gonna say. Pump and dump, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then move on and look at a completely like. He and but and the things with Davis too is he knows Bethany's pretty up like straightforward up front. This is what I want. Yeah. I want a I want kids, a baby, or sorry, kids and a baby or something. I want family. I want a house. Yeah. I want the dog. I want all of it. Mm-hmm. So he knows that going into whatever they're doing, and they're kind of just messing around. But yeah, at first, mm-hmm. so right. That's my first pro. Yeah, Davis, he steps up to the plate. He does. Like, and he then does. some. Yeah. yeah. Um, this might not come as a surprise. I I love... I, th- I think we talked about this during the adulting episode. Um, but I really love the female-centric relationships. Like, the friendships and the, the familial relationships in every novel. Not just romance novels or whatever. But... In this case, I really loved Sadie and Bethany's relationship because I read the first Agreed. book. I got to see that develop a little bit because what happens in the first one is that Sadie has fallen in love with Hunter and it's like a whole thing. 
And there are a million reasons why they should not be together. Mm -hmm. Um, But they can't help how they feel about each other. And so this, it develops into a thing and she can't tell anyone. And she eventually tells Sadie. Now, Sadie, um, or I'm sorry, she Sadie eventually tells Bethany. Now, Bethany gives no fucks about football. She does not give a <laughs> shit. She is very opposite of Sadie. And uh, I like the way that they play off of each other. It's funny to me to listen to them, like, have discussions. Um, at one point, like, the draft is happening and Bethany goes over to Sadie's house and, like, Sadie is engaged to the head coach of the Fury and Bethany has secretly been sleeping with the offensive coordinator. <laughs> right. Um, but like Bethany gives no shits and Sadie is freaking out about the draft and like who went first and like how that fucks up everything. And so she's me. Yeah, I get it. exactly. Which, you know, fine. Like, I like how they are, I like how they're opposite enough, but they share, they share this like familial bond that they did not share in high school. They are the same age. So Mm -hmm. when their parents got married, they were, I think, both in high school and they weren't close. I mean, they did not get close until the first book. And so the way that they have bonded on a relative, like in a relatively quick timeline is really sweet to me. And I honestly, yeah. part of it's jealousy because I have no sisters. And so I mean, I've always wanted one. So like, the, I just really love the bond that, that the two of them have formed. Um, we can be sisters from another mister. Yeah, please. I'm okay. available for that. All right. I already feel that so way I'm about you right. anyway. Yeah. Kind of. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're fine. Um, so anyway, I love that, that part. Um, and there's a whole like, there's a whole part about how um, it, this is not, it's obviously not a surprise that, that David Davis gets Bethany pregnant and like. Right. I mean, it's, it's that's literally synopsis. the trope. Um, right. So when that happens, Bethany wants to tell Sadie so badly, but she can't. Like she, she's like, I cannot fathom Davis being like the fifth person who knows you know like because she told her mom that part where she's um actually this part where uh i can bring this up now i guess uh otherwise i'll bring it up later uh she there's this whole there's a quote about um when she realizes that she's about to take the pregnancy test she hasn't actually taken it yet um, you mean the 10 of them she brought? Yes, she, she brought, brought like 10 pregnancy tests, which I feel like is so common among people who are like, holy shit, I'm, I might be pregnant. Um, right. So she she goes to her mom's house because she's freaked out. Um, she's standing on the front porch of her house, of her mom's house. And she says, we used a condom. We always did, except they aren't always reliable. I don't know what's wrong with me, but for some reason right now, I'm reminded of the scene in Friends where Ross and Joey find out that condoms aren't 100% effective, and I just start laughing, hysterically, on my mother's front porch. It's official. I'm certifiably insane. And this is how my mother finds me when she opens the door. No makeup, wearing clothes I don't think are clean, laughing my ass off as I hold a bag of pregnancy tests. (laughs) We've all been there, right? We have all been there. But, like, so she finds out that she's pregnant. Her mom already knows because her mom yeah. is there. Um, yeah. So now Bethany knows. Her mom knows. If she tells Sadie, Sadie's going to tell Hunter. And so she's like, I don't want Davis to be the fifth person to find out that I am pregnant with his child. So she's told no one except for her mother, who she has sworn to secrecy. She's like, you can't even tell Mike, who's her husband, Sadie's dad. Um And so Bethany feels like a lot of guilt about that, that she isn't telling Sadie. And then when they finally do tell Sadie and Hunter, it's pretty funny, actually. It's pretty amusing. Yeah. Yeah. Because Sadie and Hunter are both pissed that they've been hiding this, like, quote, relationship from them. Dangerous liaison. Dangerous liaison. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, sisterly bonds. That's my top bond. Um, yeah, I like the two of them together. I really like Sadie. I really yeah, do. Yeah, I did too. She's spunky. Mm-hmm. 
I like it. She's funny. I like her a lot. Um, so, so I alluded to, which it makes me laugh now. I'm such a hypocrite. Um, <laughs> this is like, it's going to be a theme. It's called oh, Raise a Hypocrite. Um, so I love Ted Lasso. Again, mustache ride. Um, okay. I hate fucking football. That's fine. Honey. You don't have to like I it. love soccer love soccer i love rugby i mean i should say i love european football um i love that i was I, like i'm gonna put this football romance on our list i didn't even know that you didn't but, like football but i i mean like i love the wall of winnipeg oh, that's true yeah. so i mean there's there's books that i have enjoyed um so for me the con is there's there's two i have two it's they're very small and slight one is that like a little less football for me. And that's just me. And again, that's me. I don't even know if I were to sit down and watch a football game, which I have. And I'm like, I have no idea. You kind of are Bethany, like, like in that regard, not in your oh, yeah. entirety. Oh, but like yeah. in that regard, you are very much yeah. Bethany. And I think that's why I like football and hockey or no, sorry. I like basketball and hockey so much because it's like soccer, but on ice or in a court. Um, football, I don't understand. And I don't. And I come from in a, like an athletic family. My mom's side of the family are like they they lettered when they were fucking freshmen. Like that's my my, my I think I told you my uh, my uncle was on the Indians farm team. So it's like one of those sports is in my blood, but not I, like, it's sports. tough when it got to me sports it got to me and it was like sports and i was like music <laughs> and dancing musical <laughs> like, theater yeah it was like um sorry um hold on tap 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 you're not gonna be doing any sports you're gonna love phantom of the opera okay um so this one was a little hard for me to relate because because of that yeah. like it was just because sure. it was very football heavy the other thing well let's just let me, do you have one because otherwise i'll just go into my other one go into you your one. other one then okay. i'll do mine okay so my other one is just i would have liked more to the turn mm. and by the turn is meaning of turn of the character of davis sure. like um you've got a character who is so adamant I do not. I, I'm King Pump and Dump. I do not <laughs> so want gross. a relationship. I know. I'm never going to use that again. <laughs> I probably will. You like, probably will. Come on. Just come on. I am the king of white night stands. I don't want any relationships. And then he realizes he wants a relationship. And then literally one sentence later, she's like, I'm pregnant. And then he immediately turns like, <laughs> and you're like ah i know what you're doing it i know yeah. why he, and it's very honorable but it's a prop i need to it's it's i need to see something earlier with it to really be invested in his turn i need to see more of i need to see at least a couple chapters back of him saying I really think I'm going to go for this. I'm really sure. going to try to make this work with her yeah. and then have the pregnancy. Like, Hey, here, guess what? I'm knocked up. Right. And th that's actually like a really good parallel. Actually knocked up. The movie oh knocked yeah. Up. Mm -hmm. Because that one, there is no, it's very similar because there's no turn really for, for uh, Catherine Heigl until the baby comes. Right. But they do start hanging out. Mm -hmm. That that one's more like there's hatred until the she starts to really like to like him towards the end. But mm. anyhow, that's that's my con. <laughs> I was just reflecting back on knocked up. Okay, um, <clears throat> random scenes were going into my brain. Okay, yeah. So my my con is like. And part of this has to do with the trope. And I I fully, it is a pet peeve of mine when there are accidental pregnancies in books. Now, yeah. that being said, this is a different situation. Like, that is literally yeah. the trope. Um, they tried. They did try. They like, it wasn't tried. like they were just, like, passion of the moment, fuck it, risk it. Like, they did try. Like, literally just, fuck it. Like, <laughs> 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 they literally used a condom like this was a serious this was like a legitimate accident um it wasn't just like a getting lost in the moment kind of thing which 
it's kind of interesting. I might have liked to see something where there was that. Oh God. There's, I don't know. I don't know. I should say, I say that, but I, who knows? I might not have liked it. I just see like a broken condom or something. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is just like, it's a pet peeve of mine. Now, I say that because I'm bringing it up here because of personal issues that I have. However, what I would have liked to see like more drama surrounding the beginning of their relationship because mm-hmm. Davis literally says, I would like to give this a try. And then literally one sentence later, she's like, so I'm pregnant. And then he proposes to her and she's like, no, because you are only proposing to me because I'm pregnant and you're doing it out of obligation. If you want to marry me, awesome. Only do that if you like can't imagine not spending the rest of your life with me. Right. Right. Which is fair. She's not wrong about that. Oh, absolutely. And later he admits that she's right. for the wrong reasons all the time. All the time. And later, he admits that she was completely right about that. Now, the thing is, after that, like, they do start dating, which is cute. Like, it's it's cute. It is. It's super cute. Their first date goes horribly fucking wrong, which is hysterical. But, like, yeah. after that, it's very smooth sailing. And the thing is, like, as a person who has done the relationship thing, gotten married, had a baby, like... There is so much, I think I read an article at one point that says like the most stressful things that you can go through as a couple are um, getting married, having a baby, death of a parent, Mm -hmm. um, and then like I would also add buying a house. Yeah. So. Yeah. And they go through a number of those. They go through a number of those. And like I have gone through all of them except for dying parent, luckily, thus far. Yeah. Yeah. with my husband in conjunction with the person that I'm currently married and, to. And you could actually, you could say death slash illness of a parent. Yes. Yes. You could absolutely say that. Um, now, the thing is, like, at the beginning of a relationship, you have, like, it's so giddy and wonderful. Oh, it's the honeymoon It's the honeymoon period. period the honeymoon and it's period. like, you're on a fucking high all the time. And there's butterflies yeah. and sparks. And, like, you could easily say that that is one of the best parts about a relationship. And that's one, maybe one of the things we love about romance novels so much. Right. Yep. But like they're doing this while she's pregnant. And so I was expecting like more drama, but when you're pregnant, you need your partner like so much that it was just like, I don't know. I just felt like, um, I was just expecting more drama there because I was like, it was too smooth. For it was you. very smooth. It was no, like I agree. I agree. Smooth fucking sailing. And at one point, right. she even kind of brings that up where like everything seems a little too good to be true. And right. that does come crashing down later, which right. sort of makes that crash like more dramatic. Mm-hmm. But I was mm-hmm. just like looking for some more speed bumps, I guess. Especially for somebody who this is his literally his first girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if there had been another person who he had been with longer, like he had had at least a spate of a month yeah. with, you could be like, okay, well, this is, and had something to relate to. Cause that's the other thing. He didn't have anything to relate that to. Right. He didn't. And or compare it to the other thing too, is that like, and I feel like this is just a character lesson for him is that he is a planner down to the very last second. He oh, yeah. wants, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wants to know it's expensive what he can expect. Mm-hmm. He wants to have a contingency, a contingency plan for everything. And I am here to fucking tell you that that is not a thing with a kid. They will defy every goddamn expectation you have. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they will test all of your boundaries and every single one of, <laughs> and every one of your, nerves. and every one of your nerves before they're even here. So like, <laughs> Like yeah, when you yeah, are yeah. still growing them and they are still yeah. just latching yeah. on to every single cell in your body that they can possibly find. Um, so in a way, I kind of felt like that was part of Davis's character development was learning that like you just can't. That's not how it works with kids. That's just not. And it sucks right. so hard on so many levels for so many people. Right. Right. But that's just, you know, that's part of of having a kid. 
Well, you do get to see the interaction between him and his niece, which, which is, is good. super cute. Yeah, it's super cute, and it's good for the reader to be able to see like this is how he's going to be with the child. Yeah, like um, and 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 more so because it'll be his own child. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, I'm glad that she stuck that in there because I think yeah, that it would have been really cute, really hard to picture him as like a dad. Yeah, yeah, and to like buy it. Yeah, and then like later because of the way that things go down, like. It shows the contrast of like where his headspace was yeah. during the pregnancy and then after she actually has yeah. the baby. Yeah. Anyway. Totes. Uh back to yeah. your bottom bun. Oh my bottom bun. <laughs> yeah, my bottom bun. <laughs> Th- things are gonna get naughty. Oh god. So I am super excited <laughs> that in modern romance novels. But, but, I should say modern modern written right. romance right yeah novels. I was just gonna this say this is also Regency right also because suddenly you was or, like yeah yeah very yeah. spicy men like a duh cunnilingus and I'm loving it I'm fucking loving it uh-huh. I mean, cause you know what lady don't need to be doing it for themselves anymore thank you very much they've got someone else to help them along I noticed that it is a big thing uh, where the lady gets her uppins first before he gets his tuppins mm-hmm. so um, I th- and I think more people are becoming like more especially authors having <laughs> We're all, you're all reading, I'm, I'm not an author, but you guys are all reading each other. Mm-hmm. So you're like, yeah, it does make sense that the lady needs to, you know, be primed before it, you put it into gear. Right. So at least. Um, Agreed. I would, like, I would like to read a little excerpt. Oh, so please do. If y'all didn't know what my innuendo meant, meant was, I like that guys are going down on chicks before <laughs> it's like... Sticking it in and going to town, going to pound town. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Are you to read the hotel again? Part? Like, yes, possibly. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, because as we've mentioned on this podcast, a very small percentage. It's not a big percentage. It's a very small percentage of women can actually, and also depends on the man too, in his anatomy and how it works. Yeah. I've been. <laughs> I'm bringing up Ted Lasso again. Um, so there's, there's a there's a player on there that talks about <laughs> he starts dating um, the ex girlfriend of him, so his, his like teammate, and he goes, and just because I have a curved penis, oh my god, like, and, and he goes, and he's like, I, I understand that's a big news, and then later she mentions, can you talk to me a little bit about the curved penis and what if, because <laughs> she's pretending to be the media, and he goes. It's not so much curved, is that I know how to do it in a certain way that it hits a certain spot. Oh my god! And I was like, I can't, I can't breathe. Oh my god! <laughs> so we can all imagine that anybody who's with Roy Kent is getting the full, <laughs> wow. the full experience. So like, so a small percentage of women can actually reach orgasm from um, uh, uh, penetration right? Um, or vaginal uh, sex. Most of us need a little something some sort extra. of stimulation. A little something, something. Do the fingers do the walking. Um, <laughs> or tongue or whatever. Whatever stimulant you want. Um, so in this excerpt, so Davis loves doing loves it. Loves it. Which, I mean, Every time it turns around, he's like, he's stuck. His, he's got his face in her crotch, which I'm like, all right, I'm good Fine. with that. Um, I'm going to read a little excerpt here. Davis's words bring me back. Okay, wait, hold on. Drunk me is going to ignore that little voice because all I want right now is, is the man who's kissing my neck. I almost forgot how good you taste. Davis's words bring me back to the present as we step out of the elevator and stumble down the hall to my room. I reach to my purse, fumbling around, uh, fumbling around to find the key card. I could possibly be easier if Davis wasn't sucking on my earlobe, but I love it too much to tell him to stop. Hurry up, princess, he says slowly in the ear. He just finished nibbling on, or do you want my tongue between your legs? You don't have to delay to win the bet. I'm going to eat that pussy, win or lose. (laughs) (laughs) And Raider, he does. He does indeed. um, (laughs) The first time we were together, I remember being surprised by how much he loved to enjoy foreplay. Okay, let's just call it what it is. 
that's not so much it is yes part of forward play but it's really not foreplay which i don't consider it foreplay i mean it's it's i guess it is but it's really not i mean i guess if you're like i mean it could be prep work like you know i mean it's sex that's not foreplay that should be like Okay, anyhow, I'm I fanning really myself. Surprised at how much he enjoyed <laughs> foreplay. I figured he'd be one of those lick it once, flick it twice, three pumps, and done good guy. Yes. <laughs> but not this man. This man loves his using his mouth more than anything. <laughs> his tongue could, should be deemed a wonder of the world. Yes. So such a good quote. But you notice that has been a trend. Yes, it has. I mean, it you absolutely and I have. About it. It's been mm-hmm. a trend, and not even just like in historical romance, mm-hmm. in modern. In sci-fi romance, it's you know what? You're yeah, you're awesome. no, you're totally right. Even I mean Bridgerton. Hello. Yeah. Fucking oh my Simon God. Bassett. Ladder scene. Yeah. The staircase, like Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, ladder and staircase. Jesus Christ. Anyhow. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I will say this book was nice and spicy. Twas. Twas. Yeah. Bl- Blowjob scene. Anyhow. Yeah. So that was that was my, I, yep, yeah. Men like going down south of the border. Yes, what? please. Throw a... <laughs> Boom. Put a sombrero on that bitch. Let's do this. <laughs> a sombrero on that bitch. <laughs> south of the border. Come on. I'm not. You went to Chi Chi's on your birthday, right? Chi Chi's. <laughs> That was me doing the Chi Chi song. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Oh my God. Does Chi Chi still exist? It does not. Oh. Their, their salsa does, however. You can still buy oh, Chi Chi right. salsa. Yeah. Oh, I have seen that. Yeah. We all, we all wore the sombrero and got our fried ice cream. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Down below. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. It's going to be my dad. <laughs> Treat me like a fried ice cream from Chi Chi's. Oh my God. Oh my god. Okay. All right. Wrap it up and lick down below. <laughs> <laughs> um, this week <laughs> I'm, I'm hard on the outside, but soft and creamy oh, in the oh middle. Oh my god. What? <laughs> my mother's never gonna speak to me again. So this week um, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, one of my dear friends, <laughs> and this is a very brief sidebar, I promise. Um, one of my friends told someone about our podcast and, um, <laughs> the way he described the podcast, he's probably one of the three men that listen to this podcast, um, And I don't even know that he really listens, but he's at least listened to one episode. He told someone. He's our hype man. What? He's our hype man. man. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I really love him so much. I love it. I love it. He's so sweet. He's so sweet. So he, um, he told someone about our podcast. This is literally how he described it. Fun fast. uh, Fun fact. Veronica is half of the Chicklet Book Club podcast, which I have a sneaking suspicion is an excuse to drink enough wine to publicly embarrass their mothers with steamy commentary. Mm-hmm. Dear listener, that is how I will describe this podcast from now on. 100%. It's not wrong. No. It's not wrong. No. It's not. not so, wrong. Mom, I love you. And it was really nice to be able to talk to you when you felt like you could. Um <laughs> when you got over no you got over <laughs> 100 days of solitude oh, yeah you, before i started this podcast it was really nice to have a nice relationship with you um yeah. which leads me into my bottom bun um first i do want to throw out one quote that made me laugh really hard because uh it reminded me uh it threw me back to straight from the heart um hang on let me find it okay uh, it says a shit eating grin forms on his stupid handsome face. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I told you how much I love that shit. Okay, so yep. um, the uh, my bottom bun is Bethany's relationship with her mom. She's very close with her mom. 
which makes sense because she was her dad left when she was only weeks old. She has no memories of her dad. Right. Um, her mom tells her at one point during the course of the book that she is not at all sad that that her dad left. Her dad basically was like, I can't I can't do this. I'm not cut out for this. I'm going to go. And so his mom or her Bethany's mom was like, OK, cool. I mean, there's what am I going to say? Like, Please. stay. Yeah. You're a shitty dad. What am I? Sp- yeah. Like, I'd rather me, do this alone. Yeah. Let me torture my child. Right. Yeah. So um, there's there's something really there's something really intense about like that single mom kid relationship um, that I relate to. And it's just, um, it's, it's just different. Like, unless you've done it, I, I don't know how to describe it to you, but there's just, there's just something about living with your mom and only your mom that gives you like, and this would be the same as like living with only your dad. Like it's just right. Right. A single parent. having a single parent and being with them the majority of the time latches you onto that person. Yeah. And that can oh, yeah. either be a good thing or a bad thing, but right. you, you need that parent so badly. And it seems to me like Bethany and her mom really showed up for each other. And, um, I mean, obviously Bethany, when she was a baby, wasn't doing much of showing up for shit beside like (laughs) filling her goddamn diapers and like screaming throughout the night. (laughs) But, but, uh, there, there's just something about that, that like, I hope I've shown up for my mom when she's needed it. And she has certainly shown up for me when I've needed it. So, um, I just, on a personal level, like felt the relationship that Bethany has with her mom. Yeah. I mean, it's really interesting. Um, you and I are, are come from very, our backgrounds are, are similar, but not, I mean, not right. because um, my parents are still married. Right. And yours are not clearly. And so things that I have, I have other friends who are from the similar background as mine and we are so in the minority I remember mm-hmm. the first time I realized that my parents were together, unlike all of my friends. Oh, really? I remember, I was, yeah, I remember I was at the zoo with my dad. Like he had taken me for the sun, like a Sunday, and we'd gone to the zoo. And I thought it was weird that my friends were not available because they were spending time with their dads. And I'm like, "Well, I'm spending time with you." And he was like, "No, no, honey, you don't understand." we're going to go home and you're going to see your mom because we live together. Right. And that was that moment where I was like, uh, it's so weird. It's like, I want to say I'm different, but like f- for being in the minority of, mm-hmm. of your <clears throat> friends, right. Groups that, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird. It's weird. And now thinking about it, like, I, I related to the book differently than you did. Sure. Yeah. Because I didn't have that background to come from. I didn't have that background to pull from right. because it just wasn't like that growing up. And I was in the minority of my friends. Like, I actually didn't know anyone whose parents were divorced until I got to high school. And I remember it was one of my friends' parents got divorced when we were freshmen. That was the first couple. Like, that was the first friend I had or the first person I knew whose parents were divorced. So I was severely in the minority when I was a kid and I went to Catholic school. So that has something to do with it. I was just going to say, I think that's the difference But I will fucking say that a bunch of those motherfuckers got divorced afterward. I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, and I was going to say, I went to public school. Right. So like, it's more diverse. I mean, that's just is what it is. And Catholicism still frowns on divorce and like, whatever. But, you know, it, it was what it was. My, I don't think divorce is... I don't think divorce is always a bad thing. I don't think it's necessarily ever a bad thing. I think sometimes people shouldn't have gotten married in the first place or you're yeah. at, maybe you're writing a wrong or maybe you're just going to be right. healthier, happier people not married to each other. And that's fucking fine. Well, it's like we just talked about 20 minutes ago. We talked about like Davis proposing for the wrong reasons. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
What are the percentages of uh, what? What is the actuality that that would have ended eventually in divorce because he came in in the and she accepted in the wrong right, headspace? Right, exactly. Yeah. Like for the wrong reasons, for all of the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I love that. I love like Bethany's relationship with her mom. I love that. Oh yeah. That Bethany still. Bethany's like twenty eight or something like that. Yes, and he's thirty, right? Is yeah. That it is? yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds about. Yeah. yeah, they're not like super yeah. far apart. They're only a couple part, a couple no. years apart. Yeah. But I love that. Even like in her late twenties, she's still running to her mom. When she's like upset or freaked I'm out. Literally, I'm legit forty, and there's times where I'm so like if I'm in sick, that's all I. I mean, that's all I want to talk to. I want to talk to my mom. Like we never. I don't know if you ever get over that like unless it's your dad who's taking care of you and sure. that's the one who's like i mean but that parent that's yeah. always going to be home that base I mean, like yeah. that person who is yeah. supportive and there for you and yeah yeah absolutely i mean i hope absolutely. like my kid always runs to me when she's hurt you know yeah. like i, I mean, that's... hope i'm that home base for her I, I want to be that for her the circle of love life Moves us up. She's singing tonight. She is um, really singing really tonight. Really singing tonight. Now I want to watch the uh, Lion Bob's King. Burgers. I mean, we're gonna end up owning uh, owing Bob's Burgers some re- royalties at it's the end royalties. of this. Probably. Fine. That's fine. Yeah. Sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> you and Passion Flicks. Come you on. and Passion Flicks. Come on, man. Um. Okay. So I mean, this is not a con. It's just like you. Hey, Shell. I hope you're listening. You and I have a couple. Com- we need a conversation. Because there's something that came up in this book. One thing I'm going to say positive that I was super excited that came up in the book was the love affair with Steel Magnolias. Oh, word. So right before the pandemic hit, I was um, uh, 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 Malin in Steel Magnolias. And it was one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. Uh, besides being in um, Miracle World. Yeah, I was going to say. Sullivan. Yeah. But... I mean, it was such an amazing, sorry, Sherman's being a real jerk. Um, Sherman is a cat. Amazing, he's a, yeah, if you haven't guessed. Um, again, new listeners, welcome. Welcome. Um, and so I love Steel Mike Nuyo. So I felt it. Like it <laughs> but there's one thing I'm going to read right now. Two things. How can he lecture me about the greatness of Die Hard when he doesn't know the amazingness of the cast featuring Dolly Parton, Julia Roberts, Shirley MacLaine, and Sally Field? Because what he's saying is, how are we supposed to raise a child with the knowledge that Die Hard is, in fact, a Christmas movie if you've never seen it in the first place? Which I had I had one second where I laughed and I almost texted you and be like, have you seen Star Wars yet? I should say, have you seen The Empire Strikes Back yet? No. No. But the one I take umbrage with is oh. <laughs> things we agree on. Pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. Fucking, it's fine. Dogs over cats. Uh, <laughs> and neither of us see what the big deal about Star Wars. Shell. 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 I only disagree with one of those things. <laughs> no, I like, well, you do. I, I mean, I don't mind p- p- pineapple on pizza. I'm those weird ones who like who likes bacon and pineapple. Not so much. Like I would, I would eat a Hawaiian ham. pizza. I actually would not frown oh, yeah. upon that. I, I would eat that. Like, Sweet and salty. Yeah, it's fine. Um, it, uh, it's dogs over cats. I mean, they're equal. Oh, I see. Of course, they're living together. It's mass hysteria. Hence, Ghostbusters. But Ghostbusters rules. But that was like, oh, shit. I know. I <laughs> you texted was, me oh, about it. Like, Damn it. Damn it. Um, I just had to rib you a little bit. Um, I did want to talk about uh, the labor scene. <laughs> oh, yes, please do. So you finally get to like, obviously she's pregnant through like the majority of this book, right? So she finally okay. has this baby. And I'm always really interested in how books and movies portray labor and delivery scenes. Mm -hmm. Because so often they are just completely and totally inaccurate. Like super inaccurate. Um, Now, in this one, now I, because I have given birth to a child, um, I can speak to my own experiences and I can, 
I have an idea of what my friends have also experienced because now that I have had a child, I'm fascinated by L and D stories. I want to know like everyone's birth stories because everyone is different. Every single delivery is different. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just fascinating to me. So I love hearing about them. Um, when I was reading this, I texted Ray because I was like, remind me to tell this story about my <laughs> own delivery because at one point, Bethany starts yelling. And I I was always told, um, I think my dad actually said this to me, that like how unrealistic um, birthing scenes are in movies where like the women are yelling and like blah, blah, blah. So I finally get to like my own delivery, right? Now, uh, I, I remember my Ellen D nurse being like, you won't have to push very long. Like, I think that you're going to, this will, you'll, you'll probably do pretty well. I think this will go pretty quick. She fucking lied. <laughs> now, I don't know if she lied yes. or if like, if she was just trying to make me feel I, better. I, I would assume that's like, it's a tough thing to really like seriously put a pin right. in. Right. Like, yeah. how would you even fucking guess that? Yeah. So it comes time for me to push, right? And uh, it has been an actual hour and a half. Yeah. An actual hour and a half of pushing. They gave me some Pitocin to help regulate my contractions because I wasn't really regular with them. I wasn't really the whole time that I was in labor. Got it. Which is bad because then like you lose ground every time. So like if you if you have a contraction like one one minute contraction and then you have a five minute break. What dilates and that um, where like you have to push during contractions. So, okay, like, gotcha. when you get to the point where, like, you're having a contraction, so now you push. And I think it's, like, up to, I forget how long, like, 10 or so something. So, your badge is squeezing your baby's head at some point. Yes. Literally for an hour and a half, this has been going on. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I would have, like, a contraction, which lasts about a minute. And then I would have, like, a five-minute break. And then I would have a contraction. <laughs> and then it would be, like, a two-minute break. So, it was, like, inconsistent, which is bad because then, like, Literally, your body sucks the baby back in. Like it's. I was thinking of like a balloon over the baby's head, and then it's open it up, and the baby starts flying out. You put the balloon back over its head a little bit. You'd have to ask I mean, my husband what it looks like when a baby crowns, but like, I would imagine it sort of does look like that. Uh, you gonna skip that discussion? Don't blame you. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm imagining alien right now. Probably. So it's fine. I didn't yeah. see it. I specific. They will give you a mirror, Ray. And I was like, get that. Fu-. Oh, no. I literally, I was like, I remember. My, House of Horrors. No, I'm good. I remember them saying, I said something about how, like, how my mom had a mirror. And literally, Gabby turned around and was like, oh, do you want the mirror? And I was like, no. Why the fuck would I want to see you know what? the destruction of my lady bits? <laughs> you know what? I don't want to see it when it's all intact. In, in do I want to see it when it's a fucking war crime war zone? no i don't want to fucking see that it's a floor length goddamn mirror i was like you rolled that out of this fucking room i don't want to yeah. see that shit yeah so literally an hour and a half later i'm not joking when i say it was 90 minutes later and i was like i looked at my husband and i was just like i don't i honestly don't think i could do this like this has been you told me it was gonna be quick it is not you're a fucking liar i i was angry at that point and tired. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. I yeah. was tired and I had been in labor for 30 fucking hours and I was just like, I can't, I just don't think I can do this any longer. Like, I don't, I, the only birth plan I had was to avoid a C-section. That was the only thing I wanted because I wanted to avoid major fucking surgery. Yeah. So we get there and my Ellen D nurses had shifted. I had, I had Gabby at first, Angie came in and they were both great. Angie was so, so sweet. And she was trying to be so encouraging. And she was just like, no, seriously, you're really close. And my husband also was like, no, seriously, you're really close. Like, we can see her head. Like, it's right fucking there. You just have to keep Mm -hmm. going. And I was like, fine. I mean, I didn't have a choice. Fine. Like, fine. Fine. I will continue to try and do this, (laughs) even though I want to kill every goddamn person in this room. So we get to that point and. We were right there. And then all of a sudden, Angie looks at me and like her eyes get wide and she goes, okay, you have to stop pushing. And I was like, I'm sorry. Who the fucking what now? It has been 
an hour and 45 minutes that I have been pushing. And now you're telling me I need to fucking stop. And she goes, well, we need to wait for the doctor to get here. Because FYI, we're in fucking America. And so your doctor isn't there. Your L&D nurse is there. The doctors don't fucking do anything. Your OB is going to do absolute dick. And also, by the way, all of our doctors were out of town when I went into labor. I went into labor days early. So her pediatrician, out of town. My OB, out of town. Everyone's on fucking vacation. So we yeah. have no one that we're supposed to have, right? Uh, so, like, who, you get whoever's on call. That's just how this rolls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That makes right. sense. Right. I mean, honestly, it makes sense because I mean, it does. It, 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 no one would be able to take it off any. Time. Right. I mean, that yeah. would be super. Now, I, I've been seeing my OB for a long time, and I fully believe that if she were in town and she would have gotten a call that I was in labor, she would have gone oh, to the she hospital. she would have been there. However, yeah, absolutely. she wasn't. She was in fucking Maine or whatever. And I don't blame her for that. Right. Fine. I went into labor yeah. six days early. So she's like, you have to stop pushing because we need the doctor to get here. And I was like, I literally said, we've been doing pretty well for 90 minutes without him. Do we really need it? Do we really need the doctor? And she was like, yes. Do you remember how this thing happened? Like, we ne- we did need him. And I, as a rational person, can understand that. But she was like, we... In the moment. In the moment, I was like, fuck all of y'all. Like, just push, let me, me the get baby. her out. Because I've been yeah. doing this and I'm exhausted. So she's like, you need to stop. And I, so I did stop. But she was like, no, seriously, you need to stop. And I was like, do, do you remember what a con- I literally said to her, do you remember what a contraction is? Because it's literally your uterus pushing a baby out of your body. I can't stop that. I can stop pushing manually, but my <laughs> uterus is still trying to literally squeeze a child out of a four inch <laughs> hole. Like, <laughs> I was like, Angie. I can't stop it. My body's just doing it. Yeah. Like yeah, women yeah. have been doing it for fucking millennia. In the meantime, I shit you not. She's like trying. They don't have like um, pagers necessarily anymore. They have like yeah. these things around their neck that like they talk to. They're sort of like walkie talkies in a way. Yeah. So she's like fucking walkie talking this doctor like more than once at this point. This fucking doctor is not appearing. Right. At one but I'm shitting you not, she threw a towel over my lady bits as if that was going to stop it. Like as oh, if right. my yeah. child wasn't just It's a barrier. Just it's a barrier. Come out. <laughs> the baby. Yeah. My husband is left holding one of my legs. She fucking disappeared. I'm shitting you not. She disappeared from between my legs where she had been for 90 goddamn minutes. <laughs> my husband is holding a leg, staring doesn't look at you. There's no eye contact, no eye contact with you here. because you will rip his face I'll off. I'll rip everyone's face off. And yeah, like he's just staring. And I remember him looking up like at the L&D crew in the room and being like, um, guys, because like, my child is about to slide out of my vagina, like about right. to come out. S- slither. Slither, slither out. right on out. And so <laughs> I was... Literally, I think I heard someone be like, oh, he's coming, he's coming. And I, that was when the yelling began. And I literally yeah. was like, get him the fuck in here. Like, what is he doing? Is he fucking drinking coffee somewhere? Like, what? You did not scream that. I absolutely screamed many things, including where the fuck is he? I shit you not. He, someone, I didn't even remember him putting on gloves, but my husband said that he did. I swear to God, they were holding gloves out and he took, he like walked in, slid his hands into those gloves, took literally two steps and caught my child. He was in that room for 30 fucking seconds total. Oh, I'm so glad we paid them a lot of money. Uh Uh-huh. And when I told my OB this. I mean, I shouldn't say that. We do. I mean, they do other things. Yes, they do. But in that instance, I told my OB about it when I went in for my six week checkup and she was fucking furious, fucking furious. She was like, why wasn't he there earlier? And I was like, I don't know. Right. But like, she was furious about that because that's not how she would have treated me. Like she would not have, she would have been there longer. Anybody, yeah. And well, I don't, it, I fully respect that they're dealing with more than one. Like I had a dedicated L and D nurse, but the doctors don't have that. Like they're bouncing around in different rooms dealing with things. But you would think that a pregnancy or a labor would go up there with uh, up a little higher than, you know, somebody with a rash. 
but the OBs, no, this is like dedicated L and D. This is dedicated birthing ward. Oh, oh, okay. okay yeah, okay. no, they okay. like they're on call for probably twelve hours at a time, where they come in Got and like it. he should have been there quicker than that. So even seriously, even if there's four women in there, I mean, I literally was like, chances? we can just do this without him. There's no, we don't fucking need him. But no. because of the circumstances of the birth, we did. In theory, we did need him. She was fine. But I do. I'm so glad that my husband had the forethought to do this. Um, But he grabbed my phone and took the video of, like, the beginning of her life. Not, like, near my vagina. But, like, what they take the baby away and then they do... um, They clean up. They clean up a little bit. They're doing APGAR scores where they're, like, trying to figure out how strong the heartbeat is and how well they're breathing and all that kind of shit. Um. And he took my phone and filmed her. And so you have this, like, she's furious. She's fucking furious. She's screaming. She's not happy. She's squinting like hell because she's like, why is it so fucking bright in here? And, like, he's filming her and he just goes, man, you just came out like a shot, which is totally true. Like, it's just all of a sudden, no, nothing was happening. Then all of a sudden she was just like, bam, she was just ready to be here. And it was ridiculous like just the whole thing was hurry up and wait and then like yeah. she was just yeah. all of a sudden here um it really is a miracle when you think about it, it oh a it's a thousand percent a miracle i can't believe anyone yeah. fucking survives this baby and mom included um yeah. but a couple of hundred years ago they didn't or a hundred years ago absolutely they might not have 100 percent. even now like the united states fyi has an extremely high mortality rate for maternal care hmm. Um, that study came out while I was pregnant, which wasn't at all panic inducing. Um, no, I can't imagine nope. that you weren't stressed out. Not nope. at nope. all, especially when I took that information to my OB and she literally said, yeah, all of that's true. And I was like, I'm glad I'm doing this. She's like, fuck you, WebMD. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was like an NPR and Politico, like yeah. six or ten months. But you know the doctors are like. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I mean, I'm sure Jesus she was Christ. like, motherfucker. Fucker. like yeah but that's yeah. true i mean maternal mortality rate is very high in the u.s very and among black women it's even higher it's it's among the highest yeah. and if you would like to do some reading on that please look up serena williams birthing story and then get oh, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. furious yeah. yeah um yeah. so anyway yeah. uh and one more note about post natal care she makes a comment about um Toward the end, she's holding, Bethany is holding their baby and she's talking about like how the babies like need to be near you um, when they're first born, Mm -hmm. which is true. It is. But there is one tidbit that I wanted to share because it fucking blew my mind. That's called, so when you do skin on skin contact, when the baby is born, it's called kangaroo care. And the reason that they want you to do it is because, and specifically with birth moms, is that um, when you have the baby skin-on-skin contact with the mother, there's hormones in the mother's system that, like, link with the babies that help regulate the baby's body temperature. Oh, It okay. is so fucking fascinating. It, it's like a USB cord. It sort of is. So, like, if you... It doesn't happen with dads because dads... Well, that makes sense. Right. So, like, it's not bad to put the skin on skin contact with dads, but it's more beneficial for moms. Now, dads should absolutely do it. Share that fucking burden, assholes. But, like, your face. Should I take that out? No, 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 no. My face is like, holy shit. (laughs) Okay. Share the burden, (laughs) guys. Like, we just birthed your child. Fuck off, everyone. For the rest of my life, my superpower is that I gave birth to a child. No, every so often you just see the movie. Like, oh, oh yeah. well, welcome to knowing me, everyone. Hi, listeners. No, you can take it out if you want. I just was laughing. <laughs> I went off. Fuck yeah, let's do this. But for moms specifically, like it's a thing, and the birth mom, it's like a, it's just, it's particularly important for the baby to learn how, like the baby's body to learn how to regulate its body temperature. Um, so they, they really encourage that like at the hospital. And then even after you come home for like the entire first trimester is to do as much kangaroo care as possible so that you get that skin on skin contest. Oh my God. And it, 
is fucking blissful. It's really amazing. I know. I'm sorry. I'm so happy you shared this with us. Hopefully someone is happy. I should... <laughs> no, I am. I so am. Because it's like, I mean, I'm never going to go through that. So it's. I'm so glad and that we've got a beautiful little something. Sassy mama out of it. I mean, she's fucking ridiculous, yeah. man. But like. She's, she is sassy as shit. But I want, I do want moms to know, like. Every birthing story is different, and um, the only birth plan that's worth having is one that involves everyone being safe. So, like, I'm I'm all about if you want to write up a birth plan, do it, but also recognize, just like I was saying about Davis earlier, like, babies got their own goddamn plans, man. And you got to, yeah. like, understand that when you get in that room, everything could change. And so yeah. you just got to roll with it. When I came into the L&D room... Uh, I literally said, uh, I have a really extensive birthing plan. Are you guys ready? <laughs> They're like, oh, Jesus. And Gabby was like, okay. Uh, and I said, get the baby out. Uh, avoid a C-section if possible. Like, I was like, do you need me to write that down? And she laughed at me. It was like, noted. She goes, when do you want your epidural? <laughs> she goes, when do you want your epidural? And I was like, I don't know. I was kind of like, I'm worried about getting it because then I won't be able to like move. Right. Like then you're bed bound. You just have to lay there. And she goes, Uh, "Okay, don't wait too long. I'm just letting you know. Just get it as soon as you can. I got it. My water broke 15 minutes later. Gabby sounds like the winner on this whole thing. Gabby was great. I really loved Gabby. I was pissed off that I wasn't ready to start pushing when she was still there because I really loved her. And she came and checked on me the next day. Oh, she was fantastic. I loved Gabby. Thumbs up for Gabby. And I loved Angie. She was great. Also, we had an, oh, God, this was, like, a beautiful moment. Um, We had an, uh, like, gyno intern in the room. It was a teaching hospital. And so, you know, they, like, double-checked. They're like, we, is it okay with you if we have interns coming into the room? And I was like, fine, I don't give a shit. All of your vanity is gone in that moment anyway. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so uh, there was this woman, like, young woman in her probably mid-20s who was in there. When I delivered, and it must have been the first time she had ever been in the presence of, like, a child being born, she yeah. literally cried. Oh. And then, like, took a picture of us. I look like absolute fucking hell because I just, like, <laughs> delivered a child. Um, But it was just, like, if you have the opportunity to be in the room when a child is born, I recommend it. It's really like it was on my bucket list to either be in the room or actually give birth to a child on my own because I wasn't entirely sure I wanted to do that. But like if you have the opportunity to be there when a child is born, I would recommend it. It's really like it's unlike anything. You don't have to look. You don't have to look. Right. It's just the the after effect. It is unlike anything you will ever experience in your entire fucking life. I guarantee that. The circle of life. Why is that the theme today? It really is. I guess it makes sense. Like pregnancy trope. Espanya! <laughs> <laughs> Listening for that first baby cry, because that's their first breath in theory. Yeah. Like they don't actually know yeah. why babies cry at the beginning, but um, but they the one of the theories is that it's their first breath. So like getting to hear that like you wait for it i mean it was like an extremely tense few seconds before she started screaming and then you feel better because then you're like okay well she's making noise just it can't be that bad right Mm -hmm. i know hey yeah do you recommend this of course i do i do it's very sweet co-signed it's very it's cute um it's it's got a lot of like it it has to throw it all together you know because you have this um you've got like a couple getting together and you also have the pregnancy mm-hmm. so like you have a lot of really intense things happening and at some point like it gets to a boiling point and so you're kind of waiting like i was waiting for that and the boiling point happens and the boiling point is intense yes it is yeah yeah i mean i'm i'm just going to say everything to you is because um while i like i said while the football stuff wasn't my thing um i uh i enjoyed it so perfect 
Coolio. All right, you want to take a little break, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about a- stunt casting and ratings and stuff? Absolutely. Holla. All right. All right. We'll see you back in two and two, bitch. <laughs> And we're back. And we're back. I love your voice. <laughs> <laughs> you love my uh, my sex phone voice, Fuck I guess. Yes. Or... Did you see the little shimmy I did? Yes, of course I do. Love it. I mean, again, that's my retirement plan. So, <laughs> love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> to my poor husband. <laughs> Whatever. He's not gonna care when I'm like. His sugar mama or whatever. Independently wealthy. He's gonna be like, you y'all just keep doing it, babe. Yeah. Keep keep doing it. Ask ask him what he's wearing. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> ask him what he's wearing. Tell him you're wearing something skimpy while you're in like Sweat leggings pants. and a sweatshirt. I mean it's fine. Word. Word. Tell him you're wearing like skanky lingerie. It's fine. What? Get us to Maui, baby. Get us to Maui. <laughs> what was the What was the Gen Z term for yoga pants? It's like Bell bottom flared leggings, leggings or flared something. Leggings. <laughs> fuck you guys. I love you all, but fuck off. Flared leggings. Oh, maybe because they don't. You do they? Is, do they not do yoga anymore? Is that a big thing? Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I mean, it might be. They might not be. Honestly, doing yoga when as much. I go to yoga now, I use I I wear like workout leggings. I don't wear yoga pants. I bet you hit. I mean, it goes. It goes in. Like cycles. I bet you. Right. Yeah, I mean, not it's all fads big. and shit. Yeah, I bet you yoga's not as big as it used to be. I, I literally have no idea, so I'm just making that up. I have no idea. Would you like to do some stunt casting? Yes. Do you want to start? <laughs> sure. Back and forth, back and forth, like we did before. Or sure. Okay. Yeah. I only have two. Same. So I'm. Where'd the one girl go? Okay, there she is. So uh, my uh, Davis. <laughs> I was picturing a wrestler for some strange reason, like a wrestler build. For okay. some strange reason, I imagined him being shorter. Even though this person supposedly is not short, which I have a feeling he at. It says he's six one. I have a feeling he's shorter than that because it's IMDb and they all lie. Is Kellen Lutz from Twilight? Oh, he's hot. I tried to find one with him at the beard because um, Davis. Oh, there's one on my board. I think it here. Hang on. Um, that might be the one I accidentally put on your board because I don't That's know how fine. Pinterest works. Um, I don't know how Pinterest works. <laughs> um, but that is who I have chosen. Here, I'm putting them on yours. I can change it. Save. Done. Boom. Cool. There you go. <laughs> awesome. So, yes. Um, <laughs> That's who I imagine as. I see it, man. Yeah. yeah I imagine. see it. What about you? Um, all right. So <laughs> when Shell did her live, mm-hmm. someone asked her, like, who do you see? Um, oh, yeah. yeah do yeah. you remember that? Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was like, I don't really picture anyone. Like, I don't I don't really know who I would say um, for who Davis would be. So, and I had a hard time picturing him too. However, then. <laughs> then. <laughs> then. Then things got sexy. Uh-huh. I Googled, like, actors with dark hair, blue eyes, and I looked for, like, tan actors, basically, because she talks about, like, his olive skin. Yeah, yeah. And I found an actor that I was like, why does he look so familiar? And then I remembered that he was on General Hospital. Oh. And his name is Ryan Peavy or Pavy. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, but he played Nathan. If you are into the soap operas or General Hospital in general, um, he I think his character died. But of course, it's soap operas, so you never really know. Uh, how anyway. I him? Oh wait. Oh, I see him. Oh, oh, you who he is. You who he who? is. So um, I don't know if I mentioned this before about the Hallmark movie about where uh, it's Pride and Prejudice, but they have it's a dog show. What? Yes. He plays Mr. Darcy on this Hallmark movie <gasps> called like Love on a Leash or not. Love, yeah. I don't know. It's something like that. It's like uh, Into oh, it. you keep talking. I'm going to find it. Keep talking. Yeah. So anyway, he was Nathan on um, 
on General Hospital. Supposedly he died. You never really know, you guys. Um, but he is like, looks sort of Italian, maybe, um, and has like dark hair, light eyes, built like he's attractive. Um, it's called Unleashing Mr. Darcy. I love that. Yep, I'm, I'm putting it in the chat right now. I want to see it. It's really super cute. And then they had a, of course, at one point, there's obligatory. He's in almost a Speedo and gets out of the pool. Of course. Which is unusual Perfect. for Lifetime. Or, sorry, yeah. for, um, for Hallmark. But there's Hallmark, a sequel. Yeah. It's like, um, so blah, blah, marrying Mr. Darcy. Um, and then he was on another, Ooh. oh, Christmas at the Plaza. That's the other one I saw with him on it. Like, he's been in, he is the yeah. the Hallmark man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's pretty. Yeah. That's he is a, very pretty. He's not such a great actor, but he's look, good to look at. Yeah, he's good to look at. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the important part, right? Right. I mean, all, all else is just, you know, fluff. Yeah. Parts of General Hospital are coming back to me. I never watched General Hospital. When, I mean, when It I was, was the only it. one that I actually got into. Um, but then I had to, like, at one point I fell off. Um not long, but like in the first year of my kid's life, probably, because there was a whole storyline about like a stillborn kid, and I just couldn't, like, I, I, I just couldn't. So I stopped passions. paying attention. Yep, I sure do. There's a, there's a poor little person on that one that made me feel bad. Do you remember that? You don't remember the past? Sorry, my cat just came out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> Weasley came out of nowhere. Um, yeah, there was a little person. I don't think I remember that. Yeah. Passions was weird I, it was like witches. that was one of the more yeah that was like it was more the little there. person worked with the the witch on that show witch on that show wow yeah i don't know it was weird it was I don't super think I remember weird. that part um i was into more i watched guiding light but i mean i really wasn't into that either sure wasn't my cup of tea yeah what else you got on that list um okay so for bethany amanda seyfried seyfried Sacred. Yeah, I can see that. I could totally see that. You see it. that? Like yeah. long blonde hair. She's yeah. supposedly like five seven ish. I also did find a picture of her pregnant. So I threw that oh in. Oh my there. gosh, she's got a baby. Supposedly, it says mom to be Amanda Seyfried is right is radiant on the red carpet. Of course she is. She's adorable. Of course she is. Yeah, she's really cute. I um, liked her in mean girls. Oh my god, of course. <laughs> she uses her boobs to tell the weather. <laughs> Do you remember that? That movie is genius, I have to say. Mean Girls is like, that is an incredible movie from start to finish. It is. I mean, it's smart. It's so smart. It's brilliant. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who is your Bethany? Um, I was trying to think of somebody, like, for some reason, Diane Agnon, I think, the, um, what the hell was her name on Glee? The one who, the, the cheerleader who gets pregnant on Glee. Kept popping in my head. Oh yeah, what was? What? Hang on, I'll look it up. Man, Diane that show. Agron or Agnon, but then I'm like, Glee, yeah, but up. I'm like, this is supposed to take place in Ohio. that was that took place in Ohio. I'm like, I'm looking it for did. somebody for like in the Georgia area or the South, yeah. and then I thought Pitch Perfect, mm-hmm. and I thought of Anna Camp. Love it. Who she doesn't? He she does not have a uh, a southern accent in that, but I can see her being a southern belle. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, I forgot her character's name in Pitch Perfect. Um, I also forget it. But she's the head of the uh, um, Acabellas before uh, right the the Bellas before Mm -hmm. um, she's the one who throws up on everybody. Yes, it's Uh, so so funny. Yeah, Aubrey, that's her name. Um, so I can see that. I can totally see Bethany being part of the the Bard and Bellas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm still trying to find... What is that actress's name from Glee? Who what? What is the actress's name from Glee? I can't... Oh, um... Uh, oh, wait, wait, what's the... Do we remember the character's name? The cheerleader? Um, oh, I can't remember it. Why is oh, she you're like- right. Diana Art. Agron. Yeah. I'm Quinn like, she, is her name. Yeah. Agron. Yeah. I'm like, why isn't Ag- yeah, she in the I see first? There's... I know. I had to scroll like for a bit. Although I'm looking she, at Oh, everybody. she's Southern. She's from Savannah. Oh, is she? Okay. Well, she's not on the show. You heard right. that? Like, uh, huh, she, 
Finn thought they, they she got pregnant for being in From a, a hot tub. tub. Oh, my God. Oh, that show. That Which show. really, truly, sp- like, for as many problems as that show has, um, it's the least of really it. speaks to, like, the poor sex education in this country. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was actually looking to see, has Diana Agron done anything since then, I hope? I don't know. Oh, she's I married. so. Good for her. Um, oh. I guess she's been in some things. <laughs> Look, oh, okay. Her husband's different. Okay. Um, oh, I mean, my God. Show He's has... the lead guitarist of Mumford & Sons? What? Winston Aubrey Aldair Marshall is a British musician best known for as the <gasps> former banjoist and lead guitarist of the British folk rock band Mumford & Sons. They're divorced. Oh. Well, this is since... Wait. No. When when did it happen? Because it, it doesn't say anything about, like, end date. He just says married 2016. Oh, I, on IMDb, it just says divorced. But it also says 2016 to present, so. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and hers says, too. Hers says 2016, just it. So, anyhow, that's cool. Anyhow, yeah. I can totally see that. Yeah. Anna Camp. I She's so adorable. I wonder if she's still with that guy who played the lead in Pitch Perfect. Anyhow. Um, uh, I think so. That always seemed weird to me. Anyhow. Eh. Um, you know. Let's move on to ratings. Let's do that. Um, eggplants. You want to go first? Sure. I'm going to put four. This is pretty, uh, pretty dirty. <laughs> yeah. I also, I way. also said four. Yeah, yeah. 100%. It's, it's pretty hot. Mm-hmm. It's pretty hot. I mean, it's not erotica, but like it's hot. No, the blowjob and the, um, in the house for sale was, uh, unexpected. Unexpected, but kind of awesome. Oh yeah. I mean, like I get it. I get it. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and that was hysterical also. Yeah. yeah. Like, the general conclusion to that was hysterical. Oh, with the, the real estate agent? What were you yep. doing? What were you doing? Yeah. Besides the fact, I was like, fuck off. I don't tell you what yeah, I was doing. Fuck you. I didn't steal anything. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. What do you want? Oh, it says they're divorced, by the way. Mm. I don't know. Everyone in Hollywood gets divorced. Oh. If you wonder, see our episode, our last episode. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, we still Listen love you, Tracy. From the heart. <laughs> we do love you, Tracy. And we know you don't just write about Hollywood. We know that. Right. Obviously, we know that. Obvi. Um, um, hearts. Uh, I said, I said three because, like, I mean, it's kind of middle of the road, but. It's very, I mean, it's sweet how they fall in love, like, amidst all of this, like, Chaos. intense shit that's yeah. happening yeah. in their lives. Yeah. Um, what about you? I said three and a half, so okay. we're on the same. Yeah, yeah there you go. I pretty much co-signed on that one. I mean... Co-signed. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like it's a burgeoning all of a sudden just and not over the top either so right yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. cool and there's like i i also liked at the end how um and i won't i won't give anything away but like having a kid is so fucking stressful on your relationship and that is extraordinarily obvious for them yeah yeah and um having having the two of them like come up to this moment in their relationship that is um, unexpected for both of them mm-hmm. and how it affects each of them individually and as a mm-hmm. couple, yeah. but they also work through it as adults. Yeah. Like, I mean, not immediately, but like once they, no, 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 no. Yeah. But like they talk through it like adults when yeah. the time comes, which yeah. is great. And I appreciate it. And there wasn't much prompting that had to be done. Like, there right. wasn't that many, like, in a lot of romance novels, it's like, <laughs> I joke all the time, this is a conversation that, you know, or this is a fight that could have been solved by a fucking conversation. Right. And like, this really entire book caught up, could have been yeah. solved by a conversation. Right. Like, really that's not really that. how this works. I mean, we no, have it's... a chapter, but it mm-hmm. gets resolved pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 And thank God for that. 
Rec- I, yeah. I would say we've already said, would you recommend yeah. this book? Yes, would. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, do you have any other recommendations for us here? I do. Yay. So, <laughs> so I started a book yesterday and finished it today because <laughs> um, I, I could not put it down. Um, as I'm, hold on one second because I have it pulled up. It, uh, where are you at? Okay, it is called. So I did a little, a little like playing around on Goodreads, and I went to best of list, and it was best of April 2021. And this book jumped out at me, and I was like, oh, I'll give it a try. It seems quirky. I'm quirky, if you don't know. Um, it's called Twice Shy by Sarah Hogle, um, and that's H O G L E. And we now follow her on Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I saw that earlier. Yes, um, I am going to keep this very brief because I'm going to write a recommend. Uh, I'm going to write a review of it. I will recommend it, obviously, but I will write a review of it for our website, chicklitbookclubpodcast.com. Um, and the premise is a um, woman, a very kind of awkward woman, uh, inherits her great uh, her her aunt's house. I didn't say great aunt. It was I think it was just regular aunt. Um, um, old like uh, Tennessee plantation estate. Um, it didn't say plantation. I would assume it was because it's Tennessee and it's big and sprawling. And um, and right. she grew. She spent a wonderful summer there growing up. And she's had a really kind of rough life. We're talking about her. Um, like she had a. She never knew her dad. Single mom. Um, her mom was flighty. Her mom had her when she was fifteen. So real flighty. Um. And never kind of recovered from that. Like, she never uh, was really, really in her life. Like, she kind of got, like, traded from family to family. And then you have the hero who is the groundskeeper on the hou- uh, at the house who also thinks he's the sole inheritor of the house. Oh, man. Yeah. And he suffers from severe uh, social anxiety. Um, hence the reason of twice shy. Okay. Fair. I fell in love. His name is Wesley, and her name oh. is Ma- is Mary Bell, <laughs> or Maybell. Sorry, Mabel, not Mary Bell. Maybell, and um, I fell in love with him, oh, very quickly. And there's spoiler. There's not really any sex in the book. I mean, there is a scene, um, but it's very tame you just fall in love with Wesley. You fall in mm. love and you, you want a Wesley in your life. Like he's Who a Wesley. Who doesn't want a Wesley in their Who life? Who doesn't want a Wesley in their life? Um, um, so it's pretty much the story of them putting this house together. He wants to have the house as an animal sanctuary, which again, put right to my heart. And she <laughs> wants to open and make it back into an inn. It used to be a bed and breakfast and an inn. And that's, oh, okay. So um, yeah, that's it. But All I right. recommend. So Twice Shy by Sarah Hogle. Yeah, you've told me how much you enjoyed that book. Oh, fuck and... me. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so glad we're friends. Um, <laughs> I've said yep, that a few too. times tonight. Yep. Um, Ted okay, Lasso so time. my... <laughs> My recommendation, which should come as no surprise to anyone who has listened to this podcast, is uh, Emily McIntyre's newest book. Um, (laughs) We reviewed Beneath the Stars in our April 6th episode, which is her second book in the Sugar Lake series, and uh, her third book released that day. So the third book is called Beneath the Hood, and um, it's about uh, Jax, who you've met if you read the first or the second book um i finished it today i pre-ordered it so it like downloaded the day Mm -hmm. that it that it came out but then like we've had other the day it dropped but then we've had other stuff going on and so i hadn't had a chance to read it until like the end of this week um i like could not could not put it down um trigger warnings uh eating disorders um sexual harassment angst in general uh I mean, emily mcintyre <laughs> yes like we emily, emily. <laughs> we really love you emily um but like 
Emily McIntyre doesn't write like happy go lucky books. She just doesn't. Right. Real um, life. Real life. Real life shit. So um the thing I love about and I know we talked about this during episode eight, but like Emily McIntyre's style of writing is so descriptive and um <sighs> trying to think of the right word. She's her style of writing makes you feel what the characters are feeling. Yeah. Like I absolutely felt the anxiety and the panic that the heroine feels. Yeah. And I definitely felt the heartbreak that the hero feels. Yeah. So um, I'd recommend it. Of course, she has great trigger warnings at the beginning of her books. Um, it's not a lighthearted romance. If you, you know, you got to be like, okay, for some angst for, for your reading pleasure. What do we call it? Like a, a, a train wreck? <laughs> car wreck emotionally that you can't stop yes. looking at yeah yes it absolutely is i mean i it's it's really i almost i had tears in my eyes oh kitty she's holding up a kitty you guys <laughs> I, they're I surrounding cats. me right now i miss cats i want to have another cat um at any rate I really enjoyed it. The characters, I already liked Jax um, mm-hmm. from the first couple books. Um, I wanted to see him, like, get his happy ending. So I was happy to see that. Um, it was funny, though. You and I have talked a little bit about this. It's an age gap romance. <laughs> but um, but the thing is, like, it's eight years, nine years, I think, difference. Nine year difference. Nineteen twenty eight. Yeah, 19 to 28, which nine years really in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. But when you're 19, no, it is. when you're 19, it is. When you're 19, yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, which is, I mean, heavily discussed. It's not as if she, like, overlooks that. That's an absolute main plot point is mm-hmm. the fact that she is so young and he is in his late 20s. Yeah. Um, but when I, I remember I was looking at Emily's TikTok and she... I don't remember what which TikTok it was, but like she um, alluded to the age gap of being like nineteen to twenty eight, and then I did the math and I commented and was like, "Oh my god, I just realized that my husband and I are an age gap romance." Did That's she like, respond? She did. Um, she liked the comment. And I think she like commented with some emojis back, but like, that's the spread of me and my husband. But I didn't meet my husband when I was nineteen. You know, yeah, so like yeah, it's just yeah, different. Yeah. Like once you I mean, once you get past college, things are just different. Oh, from the five years between nineteen and twenty four, such 20, a big difference. Yeah, twenty, yeah, such 24. a big difference. It's that's when I met. So that's when I met my husband. Yeah, I mean, it's you're a different person. I mean, we're oh, both different people for a fucking week, man. Come on. Yeah, seriously, this week has been a month. Yeah. But like, yes. So anyway, I I do highly recommend Beneath the Hood. I do think you should start that series in order. I think it makes the most sense that way, but you don't have to do it that way. Um, and the epilogue leads into book four, which I cannot fucking wait for. And you and I could talk offline about what that's about. Um, yep. So real quick, um, mm-hmm. I I talk every fucking week about all the podcasts that I listen to, and I'd like to re- recommend one yes um, first off i'm gonna I, i've already recommended this but i want to say congratulations to jordan and dan at knowledge fight <laughs> because they had the new york times wrote about them they That's were amazing. featured in the new york times yeah it's fucking amazing it's a fantastic article so if our you do, male counterparts our male co- and that's why i'm reviewing i'm i'm saying congratulations just because we both now veronica listens too so i we, do i've we, started listening to it we both listen and it's fantastic it's funny insightful yes. very smart uh, yes. but they're they, yes, it was very exciting, and we, we. I said, I can't even. I can't be jealous. I can't because no. this is this is not something that's it's ever going to happen to us. No, but, of course not. But now it's Alex Jones knows them. about them, so good luck to them yeah. on that one. But the podcast <laughs> <laughs> that I am going to recommend um, is going to be um, We Hate Movies. So um, <laughs> I've listened to. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I've listened to We Hate Movies, oh God, since probably their second year. And they've been broadcasting for many, many a year right now. We follow them <laughs> on, t- or on Twitter. Do we? Um, but it's four guys from New York City who they review bad movies. And it's hysterical. It's it's like your old. That's like the the book review website you had. Yes, yes. I mean, they do a listener request month or uh, each year, and it's hysterical to see what people are going to recommend to them because they usually find the dregs of the bottom of the barrel to make. Yeah, of course. That was literally in your podcast. That was in your review description. Yeah. So I I reviewed the dregs so you don't have to. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so it. In listening to them, I have found some really great slash horrible things. Um, <laughs> um, but I would recommend they're hysterical. Um, I think they have a live show coming up. So uh, where you can watch all four, you, you can watch the four guys do their shtick together, not even just on the four different screens. Um, but it's We Hate Movies out of New York City. I would t- completely recommend. Um, I've had interactions with them via Twitter before, and they're super funny and they're super kind. So, um, totally awesome. Recommend. Do you have any, any podcasts you'd recommend? I do. There's probably some overlap um, between our <laughs> target markets. Um, I love this. One of my um, friends, acquaintances type people, uh, recommended. We have kids that are like six months apart, I think. Mm-hmm. And she recommended to me this podcast called Why Mommy Drinks. And it's, <laughs> uh, it's technically two women who are friends and they get together once a week and talk about like what has broken them in that mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Now, because of COVID, because COVID has broken all the Everyone. parents, yeah. if you are not a parent, Check on your parent friends because we are not okay. <laughs> we are not fucking okay. We're like, doing okay, guys. We're not yeah. all right. Nothing about us is okay. Don't even no. bother texting my to ask how we're doing. My chemical romance has left the room. Completely. Because I'm not okay. We're not okay. If you text your your friends with kids and say, how are you doing? I have nothing but expletives for you. Like, we, <laughs> we are not okay. It's Do not even bother... Just like- asking if we are okay (laughs) instead just send booze to our house Mm -hmm. and like just say hey just thinking about you don't ask if we're okay because the answer is fucking no we're not okay so anyway because of covid um one of the co-hosts has had to take a hiatus because she just can't it's she and her husband both are working from home neither of them are able to like devote time to their three children who are homeschooling now because they all live in LA mm-hmm. and everyone is like they're st- they've been on strict lockdown for an entire year. Yeah. yeah. So um there has been Betsy is still doing the podcast with guest hosts and um additional guests and whatnot. So Amanda is kind of taking a break. Um but traditionally it's Amanda Allen and uh Betsy Stover and they are just hysterical. They're great together, but also I I still like the show even absent of Amanda. I love it when she's back because I just like Amanda. Um, but I highly recommend it. It's a judgment free zone. They don't offer advice. It is just them talking about what has broken them that week, and uh, it's always funny. It's always great, and I always find like some sort of catharsis in that. Nice. listening to like other parents be like this is a shitty thing that happened to me this week but also <laughs> so my the amount kid of time yeah. yes yes like the amount of times i have laughed until i've cried listening yeah. to that show yeah. not small. That's small so yeah why mommy drinks so should we tell the listeners what's coming up next yes okay so i'm super excited about this <laughs> um all right so one of our Dear friends, like the three of us, me and Ray and this friend of ours who will be going by the name Lee, um, me and Ray and Lee have a consistent group chat going on Mm -hmm. at all times. Um, He will be joining us on the podcast next week and I cannot fucking wait. I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Uh, he is a member of the Alphabet Mafia. 
<laughs> which uh, is the LGBTQIA community, if you are not familiar. Alpha math. <laughs> Alpha math. Um, we are going to be reading Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. And we're super excited. It's an MM romance. Um, I think this might be my first MM romance. Uh oh. It Things might are gonna be. It's going to get weird. I'm, that'll be fine. It's going to get hot. Let's not even say weird. It's going to get fucking hot. I'm not worried. Um, so anyway, I'm super excited about it. I know you're excited about it. Oh, fuck yes. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, please welcome Lee with open arms because he is just like seriously one of our favorite people. Yeah. I think I can speak for both of us when I say that oh, he's one of our yeah. favorite yeah. people. Yeah. He's yeah. so amazing and funny. Um and I it's think gonna it's going to be, be super it's gonna be fun. fun. It's going to be it's, fun. It's, it's going to be, be fun. Amazing. And I have a feeling the book's going to be good. So I think we're going to have a blast. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be really great. So yeah. that'll be our next one. Um, that'll be episode 11. Yeah. And then we I, have a couple ARCs coming up, too. We do. Um, so to find us. Yes. I mean, I would recommend if you're wanting to get a little dip dapper of what we do is i mean not only check us out on twitter which is at chiclet podcast or you can check us on the ticky talkies which <laughs> you're so good at and i'm not is chiclet book club um our website which we've been doing we just posted our march recommendations yes, we <laughs> almost did. the end of fucking april we're um, on top of things you guys we are we're on top on of it. it um is um chiclet book club podcast.com our Pinterest is Chicklet Book Club Podcast. Our email is Chicklet Book Club Podcast at gmail.com. So if you have any um, ideas, recommendations, suggestions, feedback, there you go. Throw it our way. And the YouTube Send your is hate mail weird. elsewhere. Yeah, um, to the center of the sun. Um, yep, there you go. Because <laughs> I ain't fucking <laughs> reading it. Um, Constructive feedback is one thing. Hate right. mail is another. Just hate mail. You can eat a dick and go to the sun. I um, don't have time for your shit. No, ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, YouTube is very long. Just YouTube us and just... I mean, we mm-hmm. have some, had some views, so I'm thinking things are out there. Um, but please, if you have time and you want, and we'd love you to, is rate and review because that helps us yes, with please. the algorithm, that the purple icon... Yep. Yeah. The better, the more reviews, the more exposure we get. So that's Absolutely. cool. It's so. a big deal. That would be great. My gorgeous friend. You are it's been a, kind. I look like absolute fucking hell tonight. Um, let's not go there because you know what I'm going through. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too. You're still beautiful. Oh, you are fucking gorgeous fucking gorge so let's not mm. anyhow my gorgeous friend it's been a wonderful journey that we did this together tonight this has been a journey do you know what i want to say to you (laughs) Bye! bye